Well, good evening once again. New tonight at 6, we are going in-depth, looking at the calls for a public transit revolution here in western New York. That's right. Neighbors who use the NFTA every day say long overdue changes need to be made if the transit system hopes to see a meaningful rebound from the pandemic. The NFTA is an important resource in the Queen City. Buffalo ranks 14th among cities with the lowest percentage of households with vehicles. Roughly 30% of families don't own a vehicle. Many of them rely on those buses and trains to get to work or school. But daily riders say the services need to run more frequently and be more reliable. Seven News anchor reporter Taylor Epps met with riders advocating for change as well as NFTA leadership about implementing. Thousands of Western New Yorkers rely on public transit. I ride it like every day to work. I go to the mall, to store shopping, and I go to church. But what is it actually like to take public transportation in Buffalo? Saturdays and Sundays would be nice to have two or three more on the route. The transportation is, is very poor in terms of frequency, in terms of the level of service. Riders tell me buses don't come often enough. Advocate Douglas Funky says it was difficult just getting downtown to meet me for this interview. I had to catch the 7 o'clock bus because the next one was going to come in 40 minutes where I come from. So, you know, it makes it hard. I mean, I would have, you know, I had to get here a little bit early because the next bus would have made me late. Riders agree. It's a good system, but one long overdue for an update. Funky has been calling for change for years, but says now is the time for a transit revolution. Make the, the whole system better and, and more expansive. You know, it's a different world that we're living in now and we have to change and adapt to that world. So I met with Helen Tedderis, the director of public affairs with the NFTA. She tells me updates are on the way, with the first being a new way to pay coming in 2023. Mecco, it's called. It's going to be an account-based system where we'll be able to tap and go. The hope is to attract new riders with a new fare system. During the pandemic, ridership was 30% of normal levels. It's now at 60%. And with many students and workers remote, there's no telling when or if those riders will return. If you visited other areas even read about, oh, I was in London and I didn't need a car. Yes, that is like pie in the sky, but we would love to bring that to Buffalo. When you compare us to cities closer to home, buses in Syracuse come as often as every 5, 10, 20 minutes, and they have their own ride pass system. Rochester has a phone app, which lets you plan a ride and pay your fare from your phone, with buses that come every 15 to 30 minutes in busier areas. What has to happen to increase frequency? More drivers. Plain and simple. Tedder says people are applying, but drivers are retiring at the same rate. But we do have something other cities don't. Light rail is a very good system. You know, that's every 10 minutes. The kind of system we really need in Buffalo is to have light rail system extended out as originally planned. It's been a plan for decades, but a lack of funding stood in the way. And we believe that now is the time on a federal level, state level, local level that we believe that that's possible. Adding 10 new stops, running through the town of Tonawanda and Amherst, all planned for 2030. It's the first step towards what we'd like to see ultimately is to have, have the full system built out, starting with the east side to the airport. What has to happen is just adapting and changing and not being afraid to try different things. In Buffalo, Taylor Epps, 7 News. Now, the NFTA also hopes to add continuous routes in one of the, its busiest areas. We're talking about Bailey Avenue. In the meantime, the transit service is already hiring, and we have a link to those job opportunities in this story. It's available right now for you on WKBW.com.